My name is Martin Flossmann. I work for BMW Motorrad. This is the motorcycle brand inside of the BMW Group. And today I want to talk about the transient animation of flexible bodies with modal coordinates from multi-body simulation. A long name for this topic. Let's see what it's all about. Let me start with the motivation. So why did we do this? Um, generally speaking, the influence of structural deformation on the vehicle dynamics is a very important field. This is what we've heard before also from Mr. Weber. Um, it, corresponds, is correspond, sorry, it corresponds to the subjective feeling of the rider and also to other vehicle dynamic phenomena you want to avoid or you want to investigate. Generally speaking, in full vehicle multi-body simulations, the structural parts can already be considered as condensed flexible bodies with a reduced number of degrees of freedom. This means you have less degrees of freedom and this enables um, the simulation itself. So without reducing the number of degrees of freedom, you would not be able to simulate a full vehicle model in a time domain with a simulation time of, let's say 10 to 30 seconds or even more. And uh, because of this condensation, because of this reduction, um, the visualization and the investigation of the detailed structure's transient behavior is very limited in the multi-body simulation post-processors. We from the BMW group use most of the time uh, ADAMS as a post-processor also, um, also for our models. So ADAMS and here in the motorcycle department, uh, we use VI motorcycle, which is also based on ADAMS. Therefore, um, a combination of these multi-body simulation results we obtain and the detailed FE mesh uh, in a powerful FE post-processor is needed. So to clarify this once again, let's take a look on the pictures below. On the left, you see a FE model of yeah, all the structural parts of a motorcycle. So it starts with the front fork, the main frame, rear frame, engine housing, and also the rear swing arm. This is a very detailed FE model, which has a high simulation cost, of course, but it also has a lot of degrees of freedom and therefore also a lot of post-processing capabilities. If you switch over to the flexible bodies of this model, then you just have most of the time a very limited um, visual um, representation. Here in this example, these are 1D plot else elements just to show the rough um, geometry and to have an idea of what the structure looks like. Therefore, you reduce the simulation costs. You reduced the number of degrees of freedom and also the visualization, but the post-processing capabilities are also reduced. And this is um, yeah, where we work together with Meta to bridge this gap. Before we go into detail of, uh, in, um, of the method itself and of the simulation, I want to uh, take a short look on the background of the mathematics behind just a rough overview, not too much details, but just to get the idea. And the idea behind this flexible bodies is a modal superposition. In general, it's a component mode synthesis. Um, here in Nastra and also in Adams, we use the Craig Benton method. Um, as I said before, we won't go into detail here. It's just a um, rough overview of the modal superposition. So let's take a look on the structure below. So you have a motorcycle mainframe here. It's deforming in some way. And with the colors, you see the deformation. And instead of calculating the deformation on any uh, finite element node here, so this is the U, um, we could also say um, we make a modal superposition um, <clears throat> of this deformation. So we say, OK, this deformation is the same like a weighting factor times this mode shape plus a second weighting, shape, I'm sorry, weighting factor of this mode shape. And together, we get the same deformation again. This is the idea of the modal superposition. So we say, OK, the deformation of the finite element nodes is the sum of these mode shapes times the weighting factor. And this weighting factor are the so-called modal coordinates. And if we sum this up over all the modes, we get a good idea of the deformation of the finite element nodes. So this is in zero everything uh, behind. Then you have some specific um, uh, math mathematics behind for the Craig Bamp method and for the component mode synthesis itself. But in the end, you come up with more or less the same um, um, 
uh, like before, also with the model superposition. So it's always the sum of the mode shapes times the model coordinates. And when we keep this in mind, we can take a look on the simulation process itself. So here at BMW Motorrad, we use Nastran as a FE uh, software, and also we create the models in answer as a um, preprocessor. So here we also have the same example like before, the motorcycle structure, which has around about 80 million degrees of freedom in this case, and we create the modal neutral files, so the flexible bodies of the structure. These are the MNF files. This is a very well-known process. This is a standard process. And um, instead of these 80 million degrees of freedom, we just have 700 mode shapes and 100 retain nodes left. Retain nodes are physical nodes, uh, for example, to connect each flex body or to apply forces, to apply joints, whatever is needed in the multibody simulation. So this is very standard. The next step is we put these MNF files into our multibody simulation full vehicle model, the assembly. As I already said, we use Adams and we are motorcycle, and we run a simulation with this um, model. Uh, you can see here. So we hit the track in a virtual way and um, we produce some results. We get a result file from Adams, which by the way can also be converted into a MetaDB. So Meta is already able to read um, results from Adams and also to convert it to MetaDB um, because this is very uh, is a way to um, work with the data even faster. The good thing about um, this process is that we automatically generate the modal coordinates, so our weighting factors I talked about before, and we just have to combine them with the mode shapes. And the mode shapes we can also save during the MNF creation in an OP2 database. So this is a normal uh, Nastran output database, and we can store all the modes, or let's say the mode shapes. And if we combine these two worlds, um, we can get yeah, the full um, mode shape or in the end to the full deformation of the body. So we have the mode shape and the model coordinates and in meta um, we can use the linear combination and get what we can see here in the animation. So we get the transient behavior of the flexible body. And this is still the same like I said before, uh, the model superposition. Um, one more thing to say here is that um, everything is able to run in batch. So you can run your a multi-body simulation and automatically create the animation inside Meta and you have everything ready in the next day because you can run it in batch. Okay, so that being said, we can take a look on an example. This is a very, um, yeah, let's say basic example is just to show uh, how you could work with uh, such a linear combination tool in Meta. <clears throat> so the example maneuver is just, um, a bike going down a straight. So you can here see the trajectory on the left bottom. Um, it hits the brakes and it enter, enters a right side corner and then it accelerates again and moves to the next corner. So this animation is the trajectory. And on the top right, we see the bike behavior. In blue, we see the speed over the time. So on the straight, we hit at around 250 kilometers per hour before we go on the brakes. And in red, you see the roll angle, so the leaning of the bike. And while entering the corner uh, rows, and in the end, we have a value of around 45 degree lean angle. Um, below, you see the rider demand. This is what the virtual rider is doing. So you have in red the throttle demand. So the throttle is open at the first, then the rider closes the throttle, it goes to zero, and it starts to brake. In blue, it's the front brake, in slight brown is the rear brake yeah? and then the brakes. And after or inside of the corner, there's a point where the rider does not apply anything at all. And right after that, it um, yeah, goes out of the corner, it accelerates again. And this is a normal simulation. You can take a look on you know, generally every output you're interested in. But the question is, what is the structure doing during this maneuver? And here, meta helps us, let's say. <laughs> um, so just as an example here, um, on the top right, you see a screenshot from the video I showed before. So take a look now on this um, first part. So this is the end of the start finish straight. 
the rider has the throttle open and there is no braking. And if you see the screenshot here, this is directly from Meta, you see these two plots and the plot on the top is also the bike roll angle and the speed and the plot below is the throttle and the brake. So you, if you compare this to the one from Adams, you see it's directly or it's exactly the same. And this is a good thing because Meta can already um, read and also show the requests from Adams directly. So you see the speed, roll angle and also what the rider is doing. On the left side, you see the structural deformation of the mainframe in this case. And below you see the modal coordinates with respect to the simulation time. And also here you see where we are at the moment and what part of the simulation we're taking a look at. And the good thing to notice here is that everything is synchronized. So we see here, okay, at this point of time, we have this speed, so 250 kilometers per hour. The rider has the throttle open, there's no brakes. And this is the deformation of the structure at this point of time. If we go a step further or um, backwards, this will change and also the animation will change. So everything is synchronized and you can really take a look um, what is happening with the structure at any point of your simulation. And just to give an example, or some examples, we do exactly this. So after um, the straight, um, when the throttle is still open, the rider closes the throttle, so it's going to zero, and it's still not um, in braking condition. So throttle is closed and no braking. We see this also in the speed, so we have still around 250 kilometers per hour. And you see, if you go back and forth with the animation, you see already um, a different deformation of the mainframe. You can also see this here in the model coordinates. The change, you have some peaks here of this um, model coordinates and you see the corresponding um, deformation. Next, um, the rider applies the braking. So you see here, the throttle is still closed and you have maximum braking. The speed is around 200 kilometers per hour. So we um, reduce the speed already. And you can already see that the deformation also differs quite a lot. Yeah, this makes perfectly sense. If you close the throttle and you hit the brakes, then you have some more bending of the mainframe. And this is exactly what you see here. <clears throat> and then I have a last example just to show this. And um, this is the point right before the so-called pickup. This is while cornering, so minus 45 degree lean angle. You see this also the motorcycle here on the top right. And uh, the rider does not apply anything at all. So there's no throttle, no brake, and, and the structural uh, deformation you can be seen here. And it also differs, of course, a lot to the situation with maximum braking. So you can really go forward and backwards in your simulation. Everything is synchronized and you get um, an idea of what the structure is doing. And to, you can also run this as an animation, showed you this video. And keep in mind, you have a full FE model here. So you have all these elements, you have all these nodes. You can do measurements of points, of angles, of distances, whatever suits your problem. And you can take a look on every area and you're interested in. And you can really work with the feedback of the rider or the test driver in, in car departments. Um, to identify the areas of your structure that could be changed or optimized. But if you take a look now in the video, you see, okay, it's a very complex behavior. The uh, mainframe is bending, it's um, doing um, a lot of things during the simulation. So there should be a way to reduce the complexity. And also here, Meta gives a um, tool which uses modal participation. And this is an example here. Um, so first, um, I want to make clear what um, point of the simulation we are in. So we're doing this cornering, right, when the um, lean angle is around 45 degrees and the rider does not apply anything at all. Then you have this plot from the modal participation tool. And um, the top left plot, you already know, these are the modal coordinates we've seen before um, with respect to the time and below, you also see yeah, a very similar plot, but in a different way. There's a so-called DNA plot. And um, this shows only the top 10 
uh, modes that are contributing um, to the deformation um, at every point of time. And at this time, or in this example, we have um, the point of time at 12 seconds. So this is when, uh, when the bike is cornering. And we see, OK, the contribution of mode 8 looks very important. And also the mode 11 looks very important here. Also mode 10 um, has a, an, an influence. So you can really see um, really quickly and really good which modes are relevant in or at which time. So you can also compare this to, let's say, six seconds. Here is more or less nothing. So it's a completely different behavior, and it changes with respect to the time. <clears throat> And also, maybe one more thing about these colors. And um, so you see the mode 8 has a red color and the mode 11 is a blue color. This corresponds to the um, sign. So um, mode 8 has a positive value and mode 11 has a negative value with respect to the model coordinates. But this does not have a physical meaning in the end. It's just um, how, uh, res with respect to how the uh, mode shape is, sh is saved in the OP2 file. So this doesn't have a physical meaning, but um, it shows you um, which are the most important um, modes. And on the right side, you see the contribution of each mode at this specific point of time with yeah, a percentage value and the same information below with a bar chart. And this is also very good um, to identify which modes are the most important. So you also can see here, okay, mode, a, ele uh, sorry, mode 8 is has a big influence with a positive value. This is what we see here. And mode 11 has a big influence, but with a negative sign. This is what we see here. And also mode 10 we see um, here. And all the other modes have less influence. So you can really say, OK, um, for my problem at point uh, 12 seconds, um, these three modes are the most dominant ones. And we can take a look at them. And while opening also with the OP2 file again. And um, then we can try to optimize our structure with these three modes. So it reduces the complexity. But these are the, uh, let's say, major features, or these are the most important features. But there is more. There are four further functionalities. And um, maybe we start with the screenshot on the right. So this is a screenshot of the toolbar yeah, on the top, you can enter your data, like the FE model from Nastran, the model results, so the OP2 file, and also your multi-body simulation result. You specify the flexible body you're interested in. And then you have some more yeah, um, features that you can select. For example, you can say, OK, uh, I want to define a start time and an end time. Um, so I only focus on the area in my simulation um, uh, what is or what is most important to me? You can also work with the um, yeah, with the FE mesh to mirror it. This is not so important for motorcycles, but maybe for cars if you have symmetric parts. Um, but there's one feature which helps us a lot. Let's say this is um, the subtraction of flexible displacement at a time because the deformations are quite small, and sometimes you want to. Um, subtract, for example, the gravitational influence. So you could subtract all the displacements at time zero from your simulation, for example, and then the result would be only what is really happening in the maneuver you're looking at. So this is very powerful and very helpful from my point of view. Then you have a scale for your flexible displacements, and you have further options like the scalar value of the animation. Let's say if we take a look uh, um, at the simulation with a space fixed model, like here with the virtual stiffness test trick. Um, so the bike is um, fixed to a structure, and the front fork and the rear suspension are locked. So there's no uh, suspension traveling, and you can apply a force. Let's say here a lateral force. Then we can also t um, take into account the rigid body movement, and not only for one flexible body, but for more than one flexible body. And this is what you see in this animation here. So you could say, OK, this is an FE simulation, but it is not. It is a uh, multi-body simulation um, with this model. And using the um, meta toolbar, we are able to create this animation too. So we have all the flexible bodies here moving together. 
and um, this is a good tool to identify um, yeah the structure and to um, um, to investigate the stiffness behavior. Yeah. And in further, there's not only the absolute rigid body movement, you could also say, okay, please give me the relative rigid body movement, for example, with respect to a specific marker or specific point. So these are very interesting um, when you have something like this. Okay, then let's sum up um, what we've talked about. So the new MetaTuba overcomes the gap in the structural post-processing between the FE and the multibody simulation world. The structural behavior can now be analyzed in detail with to find problem areas, and this enables that we can use relevant transient full vehicle maneuvers for result-oriented optimization. As everything we see is very complex, the model participation is a key function to identify the most important mode shapes and to reduce these complexity. And further functionalities like subtracting deformations from one time step or adding rigid body movement allows even further investigation for one or for more flexible bodies. And with that, I want to say thank you for your attention. And I want also to thank Mr. Markus Herbst of Beta CAE, who was always there for us and who developed this tuba. Um, and I'm really looking forward to work together with him in the future and to improve the toolbar. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.